the very spot where Nero had his throne as part of his judgment hall in the public part of his castle. It extended from here all the way to that brick structure you can see would have formed one corner of the judgment hall, equal distance on the other side, equal distance to the back. It would have had marble pillars all around. The floor would have been this marble mosaic. His throne would have been gilded in gold. This is the same Nero who killed his mother, many members of the same family, who fed hundreds, probably thousands of Christians to the lions, lit them on fire to provide lighting in his gardens. This is the same guy who built uh, the statue of himself, 120 feet high out of bronze, gilded it in gold. It was called the Colossus, and they put it outside the Colosseum after Nero died, and that's where the Colosseum actually got its name from. But somehow, when Paul came before him, even though Paul would have been expected to acknowledge him not just as Caesar, but as someone divine, and we know Paul would have never done that, somehow Paul was acquitted. Because he says in his uh, letter, his second letter to Timothy, he said, Though no one supported me in my first defense, may not be held against them. The Lord stood with me and gave me strength, so that the message through me might be fully proclaimed to the Gentiles, and I was delivered out of the mouth of the lions. When Paul says that no one stood with him, he was probably talking about the other Christians in Rome who didn't testify for him. But somebody would have stood with him, his court-appointed Roman advocate. And this book is his story. I believe his name was Theophilus, the man who defended the world's greatest missionary in front of the world's cruelest tyrant.